It can be hard finding people to watch some of these movies at times. The reputation of some films precede the film itself. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's bad. Everyone knows that the room is going to be terrible, but terrible in an awesome way. The comedy does not have that honor. When this was chosen as this month's film, my brother flat out refused to be a part of it. He almost refused to edit this episode. That's how much he wanted to stay away from it. I know I was the deciding factor, because I was just being an asshole all the time, but I didn't intend for my little bit of dickheadery to have such a profound effect. That was until I actually saw this fucking thing. Now, if someone were to do the same thing to me, I'd punch them in the balls over and over again until their abdomen fit over my fist like a glove. But here we are. Join myself, Charlie, and Chris, only three people this time, as we review the comedy. Who the hell writes things like this? Who, who's this guy? Why is he here? So we're just cutting to here now. Why not? He couldn't even write the animals well. How does that make just there? Sense? How could he not there now? Animal? Like this? Just take the off. Who's this guy? How does people that act? act. Fuck me. What did I just watch? But after this movie, I guarantee you, you're probably never gonna show up on the show again. <laughs> I'm not gonna watch a movie again. <laughs> Yeah, this movie was just, just terrible, just, just awful. Although you would never know by looking on like IMDb or Rotten Tomatoes. IMDb six point four on fucking Rotten Tomatoes, forty seven percent fresh by critics, fifty four percent by audience, and this has four stars on Amazon. Un fucking believable. What movie were they watching? Netflix. Netflix did it right. Netflix, I think, had two stars. On on mine, it said four. But maybe it's maybe it's like if it's geared towards me. It or is. Something. It's all. Oh. Mine had one. Oh. Mine. I tailor mine so that it knows exactly what I'm gonna like and what I'm not going to. I mean, when you vote on something, I use the actual criteria that it has. Yeah. Most people would be like, I like this movie. Five stars. Yeah. No, no, that's not if you like it. That's if you fucking love it. Like yeah. this is the movie that you're going to watch time and time again until space itself implodes on itself and then explode back outwards in the joy that is your experience with that movie. I, f I feel like that's a slap in the face from Netflix. They're like, here, Charlie, here's two stars. You have slightly shitty taste. And then Chris, they four stars. They're like, yeah. here, you're going to love this pile of shit. Well, so they were like, you just watched G.I. Joe Retaliation. Go for it, buddy. Yeah, <laughs> you're just going to love this. <laughs> hey, I watched that. I gave it three stars because I liked it. That's literally what it says underneath it. Like, it's hated it, didn't like it, like it, really liked it, or loved it. And, like, even fucking with Matt, I was like, why do you only give it, like, four stars instead of five. I'm like, because I, I really liked it. I didn't love it. Which is why when the comedy popped up, it's like, oh man, you're going to fucking hate this movie? And you know what? 100% correct. <laughs> fucking hated this movie. It was terrible. Fucking terrible. You know, this movie was purposely leaked online, and after the first ten minutes, it cuts away to just Tim Heidecker sitting in a boat with an anti-piracy banner that scrolls sc across the screen which repeats itself for the remainder of the runtime, which is about 90 minutes. See, I, I read that, and uh, I read that after I watched the movie, and the fucked up part is I felt jealous of the people that pirated the movie because I would rather watch just the 90 minutes of just him with his thumb in his ass on the boat <laughs> than what actually happened in this piece of shit film. Yeah, because after 10 minutes, you kind of get the whole point. Whatever they were trying to accomplish, it really was just them making a point and then hammering the same thing home over and over again. Once you get it, how long do you have to stare at the same bullshit before you realize it's not going to change? Right, and I, I kept thinking things were going to happen in this movie, and it just never fucking did, and it was terrible. And I, I wrote a joke. I was going to come in with a joke that I, I, uh, I, I looked on Wikipedia, um, and I looked at the synopsis on Wikipedia, and it was blank. But uh, I said, fuck this, I'm actually going to check Wikipedia, and it was literally two sentences long, and I'm not <laughs> fucking lying. And it's usually like five paragraphs or something like that. Like, it's usually pretty deep and elaborate. It was two fucking sentences long on Wikipedia. I mean, what else is there to say? I mean, Chris, tell everyone what the movie was about. Ah, uh, so, a uh, guy, and he did bad jokes to people, and people don't like him for it. And I think that was it, right? <laughs> I, I, I really got nothing else from it. I don't know. You know, I don't even know if that's appropriate because I have... It was Xerxes 2004 from IMDb said, As you watch the comedy, you will laugh. And Mr. Mr. Xerxes, I have to disagree with you. 
Yeah, I don't know. I think he got confused because it was called... Like, I think the whole bit is, it's uh, it's called The Comedy, but it's not a comedy, you know what I mean? So that's fucking supposed to be ironic, right? I mean, it was just... It, 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 was, it, was, it was terrible. Like, it was, the whole thing was just there... The, about these people that are just too cool for school. It's basically if you took, if you took Tim and Eric, and you just took everything out that's likable about that show, and then that's what the comedy was. Just the just the fucking awkwardness of the whole thing, and just the shitty part of it with none of the fun. Yeah, that's what this was. It was Tim and Eric minus Steve Rule. Well, it was, it was Tim and Eric minus them. They didn't write it. It was some other guy. Oh, you you think they wrote that? That's cute. You see, this movie was shot in 15 days with only an 18 to 20 page treatment. Yeah, but like he wrote the story. But like that's what I mean. It was all in, it was, them it was improv. Just, so that's actually them. They kind of made up the script on the fly. And it, you still, even with the treatment, you should have some structure. But yeah, it feels like a movie that they just fucking winged it. Ah, uh, it's hurting to just talk about it. I thought this was going to be fun and it's hurting me <laughs> physically to talk about this movie. Charlie, like, how would you describe it? Not just how, what would you say this was about? It, it's tough to say. I mean, this this guy is, is uh, apparently he has money and he just acts like a fucking dickhead to everybody and he, he's just an asshole and like the whole time, you know, I think I was watching this with, uh, with, with my fiance and she said, uh, She's like, this is... She said we're getting a divorce. Yeah, no, she said, this is just fucking disgusting. Uh, she's like, if I want to hear someone talking about semen like this, I either want to be laughing my ass off or getting laid. And I, I felt like that was a pretty good summary of the entire movie. Like, you, you just, you're not laughing, you're uncomfortable, it's just the whole time, it's just not funny. Nothing's funny, and I get that that was the fucking point, but I feel like the point... The, the point they were trying to make was lost because it was just such a shitty movie, and it seemed like it was like the, the guy had some connections or something, and he just, he had this fucking, like, oh, uh, this is going to be a deep, deep, intricate movie, and, and um, oh, it's going to have so many levels, but it just fucking, it falls flat. It's flat the whole movie. There's no levels. It's just shitty. It's just dog shit. That was a great point. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I have a question about something, okay? Yeah. So kind of early on in the movie, uh, there's the part where he he is walking by a house and he just starts working with the landscapers and, like, plants a plant. What what happens? I don't get any of it. Okay, so here's what I can glean just from watching the movie myself and from reading endless reviews, which we'll go over some of them because, well, a lot of these... I can't say that you guys are on the same page with the vast majority of people. However, the vast majority of people commenting are not the people who are going to be looking at this as a recommendation. I mean, for one thing, there's a person named Cinema Miner from Amazon.com gave this a 4 out of 5, but it completely admitted that it's, quote, a film school film. Yeah. That's the only point for it. I mean, it's not for the general audiences. Even as a film school film... This, this fucking fails in every level. All right, here's the basic premise that I can understand. It's a character study about an aging hipster who l life itself has just gotten very boring. So he goes out of his way alongside with his friends in order to do these ridiculous things to try to get some feeling out of it. He numbs himself with alcohol, possibly other substances, because Jesus Christ, that can't be all booze. Could it, Charlie? It could be all booze. <laughs> it could very potentially be all booze, but I think I think you're onto something here. I mean, like he he just he's drifting through life. He's a 35 year old man, baby, and like he just, you know, I think you I think you're spot on. But I mean, like he's just the the whole time you're watching this, you're asking the same fucking question: How old are these guys? Jesus Christ, they look ancient, but they act like they're 12. <laughs> Those uh, balls certainly look 12 at the beginning. Right, um, yeah, I mean, if, yeah, uh, yeah. so that's what Tim Heidecker's dick looks like, if anyone's uh, <laughs> interested. He had to hide his face in shame, apparently. Oh, by the way, they were really drinking beer and all sorts of liquor. Anytime they're doing it, they're actually drinking. Yeah, that makes perfect sense with what happened, because yeah, it just fell apart. Just like with when I found out about it was based on a treatment, the first thing I thought of was, yep, sounds about right. When I heard alcohol was involved, yep, sounds about right. But the thing is, with, with film school films, I mean, there's still some redeeming qualities in that. And the fact was, there was zero with this. There was nothing. There was nothing I could take away from this and, and, and say, wow, people it specifically, even at film school, need to see this, you know? Well, let's see what people are taking away from it. 
uh, from Octopus Luke on IMDb. Now, he only gave it a 5 out of 10, but here's what he extrapolated. An uncomfortable mix of anti-PC bullying, laconic social critique, and Cassavetti-style realism, Rick Alverson's The Comedy is a challenging movie. He goes on to say, Heidecker's brutal depiction of Swanson encapsulates and furthermore parodies the exact audience from which he has become a cult demigod, the trust-funded apathetic hipster. And I just keep thinking, so this is it? It's just a critique of hipsters? I mean, it, show, it just shows an asshole being an asshole. I mean, hipsters annoy me, but this is not a representation of them as a whole. But what do you guys think? Well, I think, I, I, I think hipsters are, are, are fucking terrible people, but, um, I mean, it's just, in general, I mean, they, I think they're annoying and they're, they're ironic and, and whatever, and, and, you know, they're, they're, they're close to hippies, which also chap my ass, but... I mean, it, it's it's fine. I mean, as as far as as this crew goes, this crew of people. I mean, it's just that's as that's as deep as it's going to go. And the fucked up part is, I kept thinking shit was going to happen. They kept. La- I felt like they're they're laughing at me. I watched this movie and they're laughing at me, the filmmakers, <laughs> because I, I I was watching this and I thought shit was going to happen. He, he you know he goes out and he gets a job. He's in the taxi. I thought he was going to hit something. I thought something interesting was going to happen. But he just acts like a fucking asshole. And they're in the church. Nothing happens. The, at the end, when the fucking girl has the seizure, I'm like, okay, sweet. This sociopath is going to kill her and then just dump her body in the water, and it's going to get interesting. But no, that didn't happen. He just drops her back off on the pier, and that's fucking it. That's it. The most boring outcome. Okay, well, we had a nice night. Good night. That's it. Thank you for having the seizure. Uh, I'll get the bull next time. Yeah, I mean, Jesus Christ. It was fucking terrible. Yeah, I think anybody who saw some sort of uh, critique of culture in this kind of is reading a little bit too into it, because there, there really, I saw nothing. Like, there was no story, no no structure, nothing. It was just watching people be assholes for, you know, an hour and a half. Yeah, I'll have to get into that, because there is, we should get into some of what makes a movie a movie, and what makes a good movie good, because it seems like this is where it's going ahead. But all of these reviewers seem like they want to be the film critic of the film school that whatever you're watching can teach you something and they want to be the person to give it to you. Unfortunately, I've gone to film school. I know what movies like that are like and this is not it. Especially since, as you, as I told you before, um, a lot of people described this movie as a Cassavetes-like style who, if I don't really recall, I think he's a French writer. However, absolutely free from IMDb, uh, clarified and said, Cassifed, he's never wrote about any of these things, especially intellectualizing. So, I think they kind of have it wrong. And you also have these people trying to point it out, things, uh, trying to point out things like, this movie is about pointlessness, indifference, and mocking sincerity. Other people will point out that it's broadly directed at any people with tendencies towards cynicism, sarcasm, despair, and possibly heavy drinking. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like at parts I was like, oh, I could relate because I've been a jerk to people at points in my life, but there's nothing like, it's not teaching me a lesson or anything. It's not like anybody's that bad just walking around doing, like, or if they are, no one's going to watch a movie about them, you know? Which is funny because, <laughs> you see, I bet you, you didn't extrapolate any of the things that I just said, but I guarantee you'd agree with this. Um, someone who goes just by RH from Amazon says, to call this film a meditation in Anui, I hope I pronounced that right, and the definition of that word is a feeling of listlessness and dissatis- uh, a feeling of listlessness and dissatisfaction arising from the lack of occupation or excitement. And this, is, this term constantly appeared in one-star reviews using the proper terminology, meaning that they had more of an idea of what was going on than the people who gave it four- and five-star reviews. Anyway, to call this film a meditation in Anui is an intellectual way of m- admitting that this movie is just plain boring. Yes, so boring. Yeah. Because when you study something, you need to study it as more than, ha, huh, I found it, because it, it, it's boring. Especially when there's not much to actually look at. Once you find out what this movie is about, what else is there? Omnic from IMDb says, any episode of SpongeBob SquarePants contains more cultural critique than this piece of crap. <laughs> and you know what? That's right. It's pretty poignant, actually. Yeah, I think... Uh I think he's pretty on par with that. I mean, it's, I, I, I don't know. It's just, when you, when you have a message and you just try to, it, it just tried too hard. It tried too hard, and, and that's ironic because 
because that's the whole thing. They didn't try it all in the movie because they're fucking hipsters and and, and whatever. But I mean, they they tried too hard with that message. I mean, it, it's it's uh, it like how long, garbage. How long could you watch the movie before you said, "I got it and it's okay"? Like, could this have been a ten-minute short film? No. Five minutes? None. Zero. <laughs> Zero. It, it shouldn't even be mentioned as like someone passing on the street and saying, "Hey, hipsters." No. The, this should go. Someone should. The, the, the what should have happened was. The uh, the the person that that wrote this or created the the fucking fifteen page Rick memo, yeah, Rick Alverson. He should have said, "I have an idea for a movie," and then someone should have hit him in the fucking face with a shovel, and that should have been the end of it. <laughs> that should have been the whole fucking process here. I mean, do you guys like art films at all? Just the kind of style where you don't really need a plot or you're just going into something deeper. Not this. This um is about as artful as that guy who took a piss in a jar with a cross. It just went, it means something. Like, he's from fucking Close Encounters of the Third Kind. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I personally, like, I, I don't like art films at all, but this, I could tell, was not what that would be. Because I feel like an art film, like, has some sort of point, but this, there was just nothing in it. Like, I was eight minutes in, I remember, on Netflix when I, I like, hit the thing to see how long was left in the movie, and I was like, how can I do this? <laughs> It's it's an endurance challenge. Yeah, it really is. It was painful. Was was a good way to describe it. And um, I mean, I, I, I think art films are art films are fine and and they're great and they they have their purpose and you know there's some good ones out there. Um, but I mean, this this had nothing nothing. The the room, the movie, the room had fucking more art in it than this fucking movie. I can tell you that much right now. Tommy Wiseau has more art in his fucking pinky than this whole entire movie. Wow. The the balls in this man grew three sizes. That's, that's right. <laughs> that's right. We should, probably, we should probably edit out Tommy was so. He will sue. Um, the <laughs> <laughs> ah, fuck it. My balls just grew three, four more sizes. <laughs> and we're leaving in. We have a special guest today. Tommy, come on in. <laughs> I'm Tommy, fucked. <laughs> Tommy was so's lawyers here. <laughs> you better bounce out on those giant balls, boys. <laughs> How about this? I'm going to ask you guys a question. Could you extrapolate anything, anything from this movie? Any idea? Not a theme, not even like a sentence, I'm sure you all forgot like any quotes in this movie. Just an idea. Um, no, pretty much no. I, I, I was uncomfortable the whole time watching this fucking piece. Yeah, right, I think to deliberately point. make you uncomfortable, I'm going to say from Charlie, and... That's what I was going to say, like, it, the whole point, I think, was to make you uncomfortable, but I don't see why that's a movie. Like, why not just make a... Sketch? Yeah, or, or, like, why make you uncomfortable? Yeah. And the thing is, all of these people who are looking into it, when you make a review like that, if you do not know what the filmmaker thinks, that's okay. If the filmmaker leaves it up to you t for the interpretation, it's okay to do these things because it's your how you're affected by the art. However, the second the filmmaker tells you what it's supposed to mean or what his objective was, everything that you say after that has to be an I feel moment because you can't say, oh, well, I think. Because you can't have it both ways. You can't have this is what the filmmaker intended and this is what I believe they intended because they fucking told you. So you have this pointlessness, this broad-directed... Um, tendency towards people at c these people who are cynical, sarcastic, in despair, whatever. Rick Alverson attended a Q and A after one of, the, one of the showings of this movie, and he said he deliberately wanted to make a film that provoked, noting how tired he was of seeing people leave mainstream films like violent action films completely unfazed. This goes against everything that every reviewer that you see say about the movie. They are all technically wrong. Now, if they want to just say, okay, that's what he intended, but that's not how we feel, that's fine. 100% fine. That is how art works. However, if you go, oh, this is just my opinion, but I think the filmmaker, no. No. That's, that's a slap on the wrist, like a cup in the balls. <laughs> just, I hope they go back into your stomach and you have that feeling like when you get kicked really hard and like your whole body becomes tingly before it hurts really bad. You deserve that because you're wrong. And honestly, you become the hipster that this movie makes fun of. Yeah, that seems like the point, like the good reviews seem like that, where it's like, wait, are you, I, f I feel like they're liking it because they're like, oh yeah, that's cool, right? Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's different. They just want it. They want these things to be there. This is what they're extrapolating because it makes them feel like they know something that we don't. Meanwhile, the people who are saying this is a piece of shit is because it's a piece of shit. 
I just think that that people that went went to go see this and 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 heard about it and and read all about this before they actually watched it, people that weren't forced to watch it due to a review or a podcast, <laughs> the uh, people that actually sought this out and went to go see it on their own, they wanted to like this so bad. They wanted it to be good so bad. They wanted it to have this deeper meaning so bad that they're fucking doing like jumping jacks in their head. You know, where they're, they're just creating these fucking. Uh, illusions that, that that aren't there, and then they're they're saying, "Oh, well, it's an eight, and you know, it's just a, you know, they make excuses, they say bullshit things like, well, this movie's just not for everybody, you know, it's just not for everybody. It's like it, it's not for anybody, and that's the issue. The the movie was garbage, and it just wasn't very good, and um, it just yeah. it, it's it's not for everybody, but it's it's not for anybody. I mean, for Christ's sakes. Yeah, I mean, the higher the rating, the longer the review with lengthier breakdowns and justifications, as well as an increase in the big usage of words. I mean, they became rants, diatribes, desperately hoping that the masses notice how intellectual they are by gleaming a deeper meaning from what would otherwise be seen as an exercise in pretentious wallowing, all by executing a jumble of wrangling words meant to amaze the reader into something that they can see as accomplishing major thought. And that sentence is brought to you by thesource.com, people. <laughs> there you go. The um, usually what they take away is against the point of the, what the filmmaker wanted people to take away. The, the only thing that, that I could see in this movie was uh, with, with the character, Swanson, was that uh, like the, you could just tell that he's just dancing through life, and he's an asshole, he's a douchebag, and um, he's just a piece of shit to everybody. And the only time you, you, you almost have these moments that, like, you start to see a character develop, and then it just falls flat. And then, like, you, you see him trying to connect with society. To, to, he gets the, you know, he, he, he applies for all these jobs. He, um, you know, he, he tries to c connect with the black people, even though he's just being racist towards them. And then, you know, he's, he's trying to, you see him trying to, like, with the girl having the seizure, she's, you tr see him trying to connect, and he just falls flat. And then the, the, the way he talks to um, the nurse, it just wasn't like, the, that wasn't funny. The sexually harassing his sister-in-law wasn't fucking funny. Um, the, the, the black guy thing wasn't funny. Like, nothing, nothing, nothing was good. Everything was just so uncomfortable watching the whole thing. Yeah, and when you boil it down, it turns into, okay, being an asshole is bad. Whatever you extrapolate from these scenes of what he's trying to do, that shit is about as interesting as, like, a fucking high school teacher trying to read all those essays, some of them are going to say every sentence of this is amazing and I can pull something from it even if this person obviously should not have passed fifth grade. But other than that, what are you exploring? I mean, it's okay to explore something, but if you explore a topic that most people agree upon, and I think we could all agree that being an asshole is bad, right? Yeah. Sometimes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, then what, what becomes the point? I mean, what is the topic of the filmmaker's next project? How Nazis were bad? I think we can all agree upon that. Can we do that for 90 more fucking minutes? Yeah, we can probably we could probably get that together. That would be more interesting. Jealousy's, jealousy's bad, you know, things like that. Um, uh, interesting fact about the, the scene in the bar with the black guys. I'm sure you read this and it's on your little cheat sheet. Probably. But those people weren't actors. They were just people that they got to sit in and act actually offended when he made all the black jokes. Yeah. So that was like the whole thing. It was like real people. But I still don't understand the point of it. It was like they were so Yeah, if you didn't IMDb this, then yeah. why the fuck would you care? That's what I did while I was watching the movie, so I had something to do. <laughs> I was just looking at IMDb reviews. You know, as intellectual as the people who gave it the four and five stars think they are, listen to what some of the people who gave it one star believed. This movie is as if J.D. Stallinger collaborated with Uber Bull and made a film adaptation of The Catch in the Rye. It just does not work. I understand the point the filmmaker is trying to make about the indifference that comes from a self-entitled generation, but come on, I can't take 90 minutes of this. This film appears to be about a psychopath. I do not think it can be called a character study because no character exists to study outside of the filmmaker's imagination. Yeah, I, so I guess there's that. It's like, if you're doing the same thing over and over again, and you call it a character study, well... What exactly are you studying? We literally see no change. We see no... Even if it doesn't have a structure, you still need to see something happen to challenge this character, and that does not happen. So there's nothing else to pull from this movie. I think I figured it out. Okay. He has some sort of camera device on anybody that watches the movie, and then he sees their reaction, and he's studying our characters, guys. We can say so much about the people reviewing the film, and maybe it's fair, maybe it's not. But what I think is totally worth merit is attacking this guy, Rick Alverson. 
this is the guy who's the brainchild behind this. Not Tim and Eric. What you said earlier about how everyone must know each other. Yep. That happened. They all just happened to know each other in some way, shape, or form. Someone knew someone, and then other and then these two guys knew these two guys, and that's just how they all came together. And no one had a shovel, apparently. So they just <laughs> so they made the movie instead. <laughs> you know, it's they funny. don't bury their shit, Charlie. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's funny though. Like one of the guys in this, um, I forget his real name, but Neil Hamburger, the comedian, is in the movie uh, his, as a, a different name, his real name. And then I actually thought the waitress, the one who had the seizure, was kind. She was like all right in it. Well, but that's the thing. Everybody the else was not bad. Yeah. Like, I, I mean, one thing I won't attack is. All right, you, you seem to be very hesitant about that, because I thought everyone acted just fine. Yeah, they were okay. I don't know, Tim and Eric weren't great in it. Tim, I thought I mean, Tim... What the, what the fuck do they have to work with? Yeah. <laughs> Literally nothing. <laughs> Good point, a piece of paper. I thought I thought Tim did very well acting in this. I mean, he, 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 was, he deadpanned through a lot of it. But, I mean, I, I thought, like, coming, seeing what else he's done and, and, and kind of, you know, he, I don't know. He, yeah, he was great when he's bound it down. Yeah. So the, the man can't act. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so that was that was kind of cool. Like he did, he did a great job there. I mean, it just wasn't. I mean, it just it was just a fucking bad movie, um, in my in my humble opinion. And uh, it, it was just it, yeah, humble. You and everyone else who's seen a movie and decided, all right, you know what? I don't need to give this movie any more of my time. I'm not going to go on the internet and fucking bitch about it. Right. I mean, I, although I, now you are, so yeah, I guess that one. Uh, yeah, I guess we we broke that one a bit. But I mean, I, I feel like the the only people that really like this, and maybe this is the ultimate irony, is hipsters. I feel like the only people that will really enjoy this movie are hipsters, and that that we just we everyone else just doesn't fucking get it because we're not on the same fucking level as them, you know. And that's that's the whole idea behind this thing. Too school, too cool for fucking school. And that's you know it's fucking bullshit. And uh, I, I I honestly feel like that's the only people that would uh, that would that are sticking up for this movie and saying no, this is good. You just don't fucking understand it because you're an idiot. You know, it's even more ironic, almost like an inception level of irony, the fact that hipsters will never identify themselves as hipsters. So that makes it less ironic for them and more ironic for us. Yeah, I thought that was funny. A- an aging hipster, like that's that that's what all of it said. That that's what all the synopsis has said about the an aging hipster. So yeah, so let's talk about. This Alverson prick. Do you guys <laughs> agree that maybe the person who would make this kind of movie is kind of a dick himself? Probably. I, I must imagine that he's some sort of asshole. Or, or he's somebody who thinks he has like some deeper understanding of the universe, which kind of makes him a prick. Well, it's a good thing that this guy just decides to go up to news people and open his fucking mouth, because I got some great stuff here. So this is a quote from Rick Alverson. When he was questioned about why it was named the comedy, we all have our thoughts. Here's the answer. It was a blatant kind of sarcasm in keeping with the character's state. It was always there, and then I grew to like it more and more because it muddied the field and confused the potential approach and reception. It seems to felicitate some contradiction and confusion which sort of excites me. Read, the more it confuses people, the larger my heart on God. <laughs> Fuck that guy. I mean, it just... It didn't confuse me. I wasn't confused watching this movie. That wasn't a feeling I felt. Well, that, that's, it's not about the movie. It's about the title. He named it the comedy basically because he thought it kept up the character state. Like, maybe he w- the character was being funny. This was not the original title of the movie. I forget what the original one was, and I am certainly not going to put any more time into this research than I already did, which was several hours. It was kind of one of those things like, ah, this works for right now, but the more it confused people, the more he loved it. It's like, oh. They're rubbing their faces in the dirt pile, and they're all becoming dirty. I better whip this out and start jerking it before that thing dries up. <laughs> right. But, but, I mean, like, why would you want to do Like, who are you tricking? Like, are you tricking the... F- like Everybody, this is an elitist asshole who just likes to see people suffer. Whether, probably more intellectually than actually doing it, because, you know what, maybe he's a psychopath. Maybe this is his way of not killing those poor, precious bunnies. Do you, I, I was kind of thinking this while watching the film. Uh, do you think he's just a troll? Like, do you think that's his thing? He, he's just trolling people with this fucking movie? I wish, but unfortunately, <laughs> more stuff that he says. No, he's he's just a fucking asshole. Well, I mean, trolls, I mean, like, I, when I say troll, I mean someone that likes to watch other people suffer and just, just does stuff. That's the only thing that really motivates them. I don't mean troll where it's like, ha, 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 lols, you know, whatever. It's, it's, uh, just... So, so, like, he doesn't know he's doing it, but this is what he's doing? The only way he can get off is, is to make other people suffer, is, is basically the, what I took away from this. He just seems like an elitist snob who deserves to die in a 
like fucking horrible fire accidents. He's a sadistic accident. asshole. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the only way, the only way, and I, I think I texted you midway through the movie uh, this yesterday, Martin, was uh, the, the only way this could have possibly be fucking redeemed is if half, just at the end of the movie, Tim Heidecker just looks in the mirror and says, what have I done with my life? Puts a gun in his mouth and fucking pulls the trigger, and that's it. <laughs> that's the only fucking way this movie would have been saved. Yeah, then Rick Allison probably would have cut it. Right, yeah, he's like, oh, we can't, we can't have that awesome finish. <laughs> Something I mean, happened. No, it's no, out. Yeah, see you later. Wait, we can't, we can't go over the two-sentence threshold on Wiki- Wikipedia for the fucking plot <laughs> synopsis. Okay, just to give you a, more of an idea of what this guy's like, this is from, I think it's the same interview that I just read. This is the full question and his response. The question goes, A lot of reviewers have latched onto the idea that the main character is unlikable and has elicited more anger or indifference than sympathy or pity, even in the positive reviews, has that reaction surprised you? That's legitimate criticism. You, your main character, even the positive reviews, are saying that he's a jerk. Yeah. Has this surprised you? Maybe it's... Sh- that would be like an easy yes or no. You know, no, because I, ca- I wanted to do that. I wanted to do this. Or, wow, really? They thought that? Uh, that's not what I meant, but okay. Instead, he s- goes on to say this. Some of the negative reviews have lambasted the movie because of the despicable nature of the character, which is really fascinating to me in the most defunct kind of irrational criticism. It's fascinating. That goes back to some people's idea that a movie should be on our terms as opposed to the filmmaker or the world. When anyone approaches me, if there's a dislike, usually it's a great dislike. It's usually not a passive sort of thing. That feeling that there's been an infraction because they have had to see something on their terms and they didn't have a way in. Just having seen a more, the thing I love the most is the objective nature of it. There doesn't seem to be this fissure in the thing for you to get into it emotionally. That's maybe the biggest service of contemporary cinema that deals with difficult topics, a sort of repairing the wall that exists with objective viewing. When you go to the movie, you can sit and actually analyze behavior. We disrupt a lot of that by turning into a subjective experience and becoming one with the protagonist. So I'm going to break down everything that he just said. Please do. He acknowledges the question, calls it an irrational criticism, then blames the audience for watching the movie wrong. <laughs> this guy is what all the positive views believes he's criticizing. Oh, God. I just don't get it. It doesn't make sense. Huh. Let's look at this last word. Not last word. Let's look at this last sentence. We disrupt that a lot by turning it into a subjective experience and becoming one with the protagonist. He doesn't want you to get into the movie and feel like you're one with the hero or protagonist or whoever's on screen that you're supposed to be focusing on. He doesn't want that. Any good filmmaker will tell you to get a person invested in the movie, you have to be invested in the person you're watching. Apparently, this just doesn't apply to him and he thinks that the other way is wrong. Now, let's compare. Let's take his mind-blowing 54% of people, let's not do critics, 54% of people like this movie on Rotten Tomato, the audience. How many people like fucking Captain America? Loved it. Thought it was great. X-Men. Loved yeah, it. Yeah, it was great. Half the movies in that collection over there. Star Trek, Big Lebowski, Blues Brothers, even fucking Despicable Me. They all have a higher rating than this guy. So obviously, he's the minority. Why does he believe he has the right? You know, he has the right. Fuck him. Why does he have the balls to say that everyone else is wrong? There's a point where you have to become introspective about this and just say, hey, I like something different. Instead of saying, no, dude, no, this, this is how it's supposed to be. You're all fucking wrong. Yeah, there seems to be this trend with people where they think that because, like, a lo- most movies kind of use the same formula and, like, three-act structure, like, that they're wrong because it's a tired thing. But, like, there's a reason it exists. Usually. Like yeah, it's, it's so that we can tell a story. Yeah. Um, you know what? Here's the reason of the three-act structure. It's not to limit what the filmmaker's supposed to do, because you can play around with it. Christopher Nolan has done a great job of playing around with it, but still, or um, Quentin Tarantino, but they've all stood within at least the basic form, for, not formula, the basic structure, because the structure does not contain a formula, which is what I'm trying to get at. I'm going to tell you a story. So I went out and I bought a cat today. I brought the cat home. The cat scratched me. So now I had to return the cat. You know what happened. A led to B, led to C. 
and it arced where I bought a cat and eventually returned it. Now imagine it's... You're a dick. Why would you return the cat? I know. I have three cats in this fucking house. <laughs> I'm done with goddamn cats. You have very low tolerance for cats, apparently. They scratched me and I sent it home. <laughs> They're going to kill it. Yeah. I got cat scratch fever. <laughs> <laughs> I got a cat today, and then I brought it home, and it scratched me, and I broke its fucking neck, and I buried it in the yard. Oh, hi, Rick Alderson. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Moved on from tormenting people mentally, I see. <laughs> Emotional damage isn't enough. Yeah. No. No, but imagine, this is how he wants movies to play out. Because it's not about telling the story of what I went through. It's about, so I went to the pound. Huh, there's this thing over there. I don't know what it was. But it's deeply, oh, is that a cat? Hold on. Okay, now I'm back in my house. I have this cat. What happened? I don't know. Okay. Now we're going to go to the future. I had to get rid of the cat. So my mother, what happened was, she died of, gone to sit for herpa AIDS from a dog that was bit by a bat that you see the problem here I'm just going off on all these goddamn tangents I'm not getting to the fucking point and then I just end yeah I kind of am interested to read the treatment that he had like cause it, were the scenes all what happened in the scenes I I'm wondering? sorry he, it was probably on a bar napkin you think those stuck around <laughs> I know <laughs> just like this guy's a dick <laughs> I imagine that they just looked at him and be like uh, why are there shit stains all over this it's like oh I didn't actually write anything I just wiped my ass with a piece of paper and that's <laughs> this is what we're gonna do we're gonna we're gonna turn this into a film and they did you so know, well done one of the reviews aspect. I read actually said that they bought the DVD and they watched the special features and apparently he did kind of do the same thing over and over again. Just basically, like, show them a piece of paper and was like, hey, here's kind of what's going on, and just uh, wing it. Can you imagine how sad your life is if you buy this DVD, <laughs> take it home, and then w watch the movie, and then go, now I need to see how that was made. I need to see the special <laughs> I need more. Yeah, let's watch it with commentary this you time. You know what? If you spend that much money, you might as well just be like, all right, how can I justify the rest of this? Let's see, it cost me $9.99, so I have to justify $9.98. Yeah, I, I mean, and the other thing, the, the interesting thing that he said in that, that uh, comment that you just read is he's talking about um, uh, cinema that deals with difficult topics. Um, this does not deal with a difficult topic. Like, I watched 12 Years a Slave, which is a difficult topic. It's a, it's a natural Overdone, shit. but definitely difficult. Overdone, but definitely a difficult topic. And, um, yeah, I mean, there's, like, cringing moments, and, and there's that wall there where you're, you, you know, that you have trouble connecting with some of the characters because everything's just so shitty in that movie, and you feel so horrible. This was about a hipster douchebag asshole. This was not a, this was not a difficult fucking topic this wasn't a difficult topic he wasn't tearing down walls he wasn't like just throwing it in our face he he was doing none of that it was not a difficult topic it was a fucking pointless story with zero entertainment value zero plot zero story arc zero fucking rewatchability i mean it's just nothing nothing was there and it's lazy filmmaking it literally is. Uh, I wrote this, and you guys are going to improvise it. We're going to shoot. Maybe he has a good eye for the camera, but it was a lot of just kind of plain shots. Um, the a lot of close-ups. Yeah, the s or Faces. medium shots. Me the scenery was kind of nice. At least he got that in frame. But who the fuck cares? Uh, speaking of, like, difficult topic, though, they actually, like, avoided that, like, his father's dying the whole movie, and there's, like, I d normally would feel bad or something, but, like, I did not care at all. Yeah, he just, yeah, I mean, he's he's sitting there and, and, and giving that the male nurse shit, telling him that, that he might have his father's shit underneath his fingernails yeah, on, yeah. on his way home, and to be careful of that. I mean, this this movie was so fucking bad. <laughs> so not redeemable. Nothing redeemable about it. But yeah, I mean, the, the father dying, nothing to do with that, nothing to do with, you know, he's, he's a trust fund baby, he's out in his fucking boat all the time, and he's, he's just an absolute prick to everyone, and every chance this movie gave of, of, of giving some sort of character with him, or, or, or making something happen, a, a plot of some sort, anything like that, that was about to happen, they just fucked off and went the other way. Alright, so let's get your final thoughts on this. Chris, if you could recommend this movie or not recommend it in five words what would you say um am i talking to an enemy or a friend <laughs> this, this is a bold. great question okay so if i'm talking to an enemy uh best movie i've ever seen and if i'm talking to a friend uh don't watch this piece shit <laughs> does that work works for me <laughs> charlie in five words, how would you review this movie? 
Hipster fuckface douchebag suicide. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Charlie. God damn. <laughs> That's dark. All right, well, might as well sum up this movie with one of its own quotes. Yeah, I rape anything I can get my hands on, all right? We did it. Nice. Yeah, yeah right. holy shit. <laughs> all right. So I have three movies. That's going to be the next one. They're much better, um, relatively speaking. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, Martin. <laughs> Is this torture? What did I do to you to deserve this movie? Um... <laughs> uh, it's not what you did, it's just what you didn't know. I mean, everyone else that kind of, like, P- PT's usually here, Paul Morris usually here, but they just knew. I oh, think. you know what? You didn't subscribe to the podcast, so you had no idea. Yeah, I was subscribed, was. I think. I, right? just, I was subscribed, I just don't listen to it. <laughs> All right, so I have three choices here, and you guys get to vote on which one you want to be the next movie that gets reviewed. Number one, Schoolgirl Hitchhikers. It's about lesbian jewel thieves. Hansel and Gretel get baked. It's Hansel and Gretel, but the witch grows weed instead of having a candy house. Or The Baby, which is about a social worker <laughs> who visits a strange Jeez. white trash family, which includes a grown man who wears diaper, and somehow it's rated PG. You're, this, you're pushing The Baby, man. I mean, <laughs> I know, that the sounded ba- pretty... The Baby's... The Look, baby. I think I choose diff- I have a list of ten movies, and I literally just, as we watch each one, it gets whittled down, so soon you're going to see a lot of repeats. Yeah, I mean, The Baby's been on the list, uh, a choice for the past three, I believe. So. What made you pick, th- like, those three sound awesome. What, did, whoever did the last podcast and picked the comedy is a fucking asshole. Uh, also, it was a tie. Oh. And I broke the tie. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I like that, uh... Hansel and Gretel get baked one. That sounded actually funny. All right, we got one for Hansel and Gretel get baked. Watch the shit out of that, Charlie. Oh boy, I hate to I hate to give majority decision to the movie that uh, was already picked. I, although, wait, wait, so we got Hansel and Gretel get baked, and then the the second one was uh, the baby. What was the third one there? Schoolgirl Hitchhikers. It's oh, about yeah. and jewel thieves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I live in a small. Uh, we we have one TV right now. I don't know if I can get away with watching a softcore pornography for uh, <laughs> for an hour and a half. Um, so I'm gonna go with. Um, What's, read the baby description again. It's about a social worker who visits a strange white trash family, which includes a grown man who wears diapers, and somehow it's rated PG. We gotta do it. I'm gonna go with the baby. It's gotta be done. Alright, so that means it's a, a tie between two of them. Uh, anyone got a quarter? We, we, got, a, we, got, a bo- we got a bottle cap. Yeah, you know that's gonna be skewed. We live... I, I, got, a, ha- I got a couple hundreds. Can we... <laughs> Yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> yeah, I got a coin. Hold on. I don't want to fucking get up to have to find the fucking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, excuse me. Oh no, that's a. That's a piece of paper, Charlie. That's a candy wrapper or God something. God damn it! What are you doing? You eat like your Reese's and just shove it all. Like, I'm gonna keep this for later. <laughs> this is. Uh, I can lick the paper. Yeah, memories. Most people have photos of their kids. I have my old candy wrappers in there. <laughs> all right, guys. So, heads, Hansel and Gretel gets baked. Tails, the baby. Either one is... And the coin's about to be flipped, and it's up in the air. Martin catches it. Call it. Flips it over. No, he's not going to flip it. And it's Tails. What do we got? Is that the baby? That's the baby. Oh, we're watching the fucking baby. That should happen. Next episode of What Did I Just Watch? The baby. (laughs) And until then, (laughs) get the fuck out of my house. (laughs) That's it for now. Catch more episodes on iTunes, Stitcher, or YouTube. And while you're at it, catch Chris's podcast, Punch the Night, on iTunes. It lampoons everything from 24 to, well, 24, I guess. He has more time to watch TV than I do. If you want to share your thoughts, questions, recommendations, or just send some good old-fashioned hate mail, email us at wdijwpodcast at gmail.com or write something on our Facebook page. You can find me on Twitter at SomeJerkFB or on Tumblr at SomeJerkFromBoston. Until next time... Only douchebags make their comedies not funny on purpose. Don't be a douchebag. <laughs>